so we'd have more fees for the PayPal, which sometimes if you use the PayPal integration, PayPal might, uh, might show those fees uh, in the integration. So I'm gonna say this minus this are the fees. And then we're gonna say that is gonna come out of the, the PayPal clearing account, negative sum of these two, right? So now we're gonna say, okay, I see this hitting my PayPal account in the bank feeds, cool, PayPal, boom. And this is how much we thought was gonna hit the bank, but I knew that wasn't right because PayPal hit us with a fee of $5.55 before they deposited this amount into the bank. So now we've got more fees and you might wanna charge fees for different kinds of fees, PayPal fees versus other fees and whatnot can be useful. So you can kind of track, you know, who's charging you more fees, <laughs> but, but uh, you know, you may, maybe you don't need to do that, but that might be worth doing. I'll just put in the fees right now. And then Shopify PayPal clearing, if I double click on this one and then say plus that, boom, it goes back down to zero. That's what a clearing account does. We moved it from here up to the checking account and accounted for the added bit of fees that PayPal hit us with. So now we're gonna say the checking account's the same thing. In the checking account, this is the amount that was paid through the Shopify app. Uh, we're gonna imagine that we see this amount come into the checking account in the bank feeds. And so now we're gonna say, okay, cool. Uh, the other side's gonna come out of the Shopify payments and it should be perfect with no added fees because this is the Shopify payment portal and they we already saw their fees. So we've got those picked up already. So then I can go into the checking account and say bank feeds. We'll pick that up in the checking, check it out, checking, checked it. And then we go to the Shopify clearing account and boom, plus this one, it goes back down to zero, clears back out. So now you can see this is a way that we we kind of get to the to the same end result for the most part, although I added fees for the PayPal up here, then our last method, but we, we're tracking the detail as we go. And that possibly could help us with the sales tax too, which is something that can muddy things up if I'm just waiting until something hits the bank. So if I unhide uh, over here, unhide, I'm gonna unhide by going from E to O, right click and unhide. So you'll recall under the cash method, I just kind of recorded everything as sales and then I made a, a little bit of an adjustment and just dumped everything into fees, right? To, to adjust it. But over here, and then, and this amount, obviously if PayPal hit us with a fee, would be lower from the fee because I tweaked it a little bit over here. But on this side, we said, we get the detail, right? So this is actually, so this, so this amount here should be equal or greater to any 1099 that we get because the 1099 should be based on the gross sales number and we need to report something for taxes greater or equal to the 1099 generally otherwise we're likely to get you know the irs might have questions about it right and but now we're, we're more accurately breaking out the the discounts versus the shipping and stuff charges and then other charges, which we could break out more specifically to PayPal charges and Shopify charges. And we can more easily break out our sales tax, possibly helping us out with uh, dealing with our sales tax type of situation. So you can see this could be helpful for federal income taxes, obviously. It could be helpful for sales tax and it could be quite helpful for your internal decision making because again most people are pretty good at shopify when they're like when when they like really like these shopify or online stores at picking products and whatnot but possibly not sometimes the they're not so good at, at to start off with the the deal, dealing with minimizing costs like like shipping costs and fees and whatnot from different payment processors and which payment processor would be the best to use should we just have all the payment processors because that might increase our sales or should we limit the payment processors because some of them charge us way more fees than others and whatnot those kind of questions and then what kind of inventory should we be should we be purchasing is easier to kind of determine if you have a bigger a better breakout of your of your income numbers and then we'll talk about cost of goods sold which is the other half that we'll think about 
at a, a future point. So it could help with, of course, internal decision making. So this is the manual method, but it also kind of mirrors what we'll talk about later, which is the which is the some of the integration app methods and what the apps do. And next time we'll put this into QuickBooks maybe.